Well, you asked for it. So in this deep dive video, we'll be looking at all things that are objectively perfect and require all of the hard work and dedication to achieve. Today, everyone, we will be examining the best parts of Destiny 2, from the Legend of Edge Transit to the history of the farm and the examining of the best exotics to come out of Destiny. Destiny was never the same after these came out, and I'm happy to share this with you. So let's get started. If this channel keeps popping up in your recommended feed, feel free to call the creator out and tell him to stop shamelessly plugging his channel. <laughs> ah, yes. The farm. Destiny's most populated social space and the only one if you're still playing the Red War campaign. The farm was to be our new homeland after we lost the rusty old waste of space, the tower. The farm is home to many vendors too, like the Cryptarch. The farm has various activities too, such as loading into it and the soccer field with its next-gen physics. Get the fuck out of my room, I'm playing Destiny 2? Fun fact, if you win a game, Hawthorne will tell you you have a nice ween. I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting. Indeed. The farm also lets you run on a windmill to then get juice to run across some wires in the sky to then jump around, roid it out of your mind, and finally give the roids to everyone else in the farm. No, I'm not going to say the other word, just know I was thinking it too. Outside of that, there are activities like sitting around a fire, being told you can't go there, and oh my god, what the Destiny 2? is that? Overall, the farm serves as a great place to settle down and get cozy like any other timeshare. Why are you running? Why are you running? Edge Transit is the rarest gun to come out of Destiny. Don't believe me? Take it from this happy customer who was gracious enough to share his transit story. Uh, I'm just happy I got one. I spent over 6,000 shards for my Fractaline investing, and I finally have my god roll. I love it. Oh, Edge Transit, bro! Whoa! Edge Transit makes for great armor and is the only weapon the Cryptarch won't give you. In all, this weapon blows every other nade launcher out of the water. <laughs> yes, the best weapons of Destiny's history. We have covered some of the game's weapons like Touch of Malice, The Whisper of the Worm, Outbreak Prime and Perfected, but we have never touched the god tier of weapons. These are S plus tier, and I was saving these for later, but let's just dump them on you now. Dreg's Promise, the gun that looks like half a Lord of Wolves, but packs a big punch. You know what they say, right? Yeah, me either. Listen to Lord Deej when it comes to the effectiveness of this weapon. It's a little bit more balanced out now. Sounds so. scary. I mean, when you do that, when you say, okay, now this gun has tracking rounds and they work a lot better, <laughs> yeah. are you always kind of like, all right, I'm going to yeah. give this to the community, and it's like, uh, let's see what happens. It this is thing very could much. become the yeah. first and last word in Crucible <laughs> Combat. So what if it takes more than a mag to kill a single ad? I see nothing wrong here. Moving on to another banger of a weapon, we have the super good What? What is that sound? Jesus Christ, keep it down. Well, I guess I guess we'll just wait then. Okay, you done? Okay. All right, you know what? We're we're just going to move on. We have the hard li Wait. Oh, this thing sucks now. All right, never mind. We have the Skyburner's Oath, the best weapon for failing shields and the best weapon if you want to live your true dream as an AC-130 that shoots lucky charms at your enemies. Two-Tailed Fox's perk is that you can't see the whole weapon on the screen and Leviathan's Breath is the best at pushing Callus off his ledge. <laughs> Trinity Ghoul's exotic perk is that you will never see a guardian who uses it. Remember Coldheart? I'm so close to adding you to the S plus tier after all the things you've been through. And finally for the weapon, Wish Ender, the exotic bow that became great for its ability to net you legendaries, and by legendaries, I mean shards.
Now, all these weapons could have videos of their own, but why ruin the epic scale of these on different videos? What am I, stupid? Weapons aren't the only thing S plus tier, though. So let's look through some of the exotic armor that has been bestowed upon us in this series, too. Here we have the Eternal Warrior, the only helmet that will scare people away before they can attack. Pretty unique perk. Next up is the Severance Enclosure. I forgot what this one does, and it was in the game, and I think that's what makes it truly exotic. After that, we have some exotics, which I'm going to call the Stow and Show Exotics. These are peacekeepers in lucky pants, both letting you know that they are exotics and that they can prove it by putting some ammo into a weapon you aren't using. Graviton forfeit wait. Oh. Oh, that's right. They changed you. Now you just keep me hidden away from the ghouls just a bit longer. The Aeon series. Ruin Wings makes sure you never have heavy ammo, Alchemist Raiment makes sure you're financially secure, and the Apotheosis Veil keeps you feeling like you're playing without an exotic equipped, really providing that next level of challenge. Now, I know what you're saying. Evan, how do I get all these weapons and all that armor? Let me introduce you to the pinnacle activities that reward this loot. Well, you have to get these exotics and there's a few places where you can earn them. Trials. You're just gonna need to get good like this guy. You used to have to stretch the extra mile and make public events heroic if you wanted them. But now they make you play the easiest of activities, 1030 Nightfalls for guaranteed drops. Or you can just wait until Friday when you can gather a group of scavengers for the hunt of a lifetime. Through planet, to moon, to centaur, in search of one vendor, one that will make you pay tens of shards out of the thousands you own for his items. Some can be bad like the Luna Faction Boots and Thunderlord, while others can be S plus tier, like the Skull of Dire Ahamkara post buff. Yes, this vendor will really shorten out that pesky grind that a looter shooter should never aim to have, while also having zero implication on the story for 6 plus years, making you say thanks for keeping the mystery alive, well, and healthy. I am an agent of the night. Now this is only scratching the surface of places to get the great loot, and I'm forgetting some major places too. Outside of the bad ones, there's Nessus, which is big, there's Io, which makes you go ooh. there's Mercury, and over there you will see Titan trying to have something to do. One thing these places share is that one day they will all be home to a seasonal activity that will help us keep their names going strong, like Sundial and the Seraph Towers. I want to wrap up by talking about the best way all of us can grab some loot this year. Venture Ever Eververse! You can take home this dope new ornament in this beautiful emote, only in payments of $19.99 plus shipping and handling. I know, I know. Evan, you can grind all of the Eververse items without visiting the Church of Fen. But why do bounties for a crumb of the brightest dust when you can skip that altogether? Well, uh, that's because that's this season's content. And that's all the content we have on this special deep dive into the objectively perfect parts of Destiny. Next time we will talk to a man who has been dead since the first year of Destiny, Atheon. That poor, poor soul. We will also forget this video ever happened. Hope everyone studied the video with a candle lit and blood as their ink and take an oath of silence in the comment section. If you somehow found this entertaining, we could really use some likes, subs, and Twitch views. The budget is falling apart at the seams. And finally, if you are angry at this April the 1st deep dive, send a letter to Hawthorne. She will let you know what we all think. You just never quit, do you? Took out Gaul, woke up the Traveler, and now half of what I hear in the streets is how much you and your clan are making a difference. And that's why I started this whole clan thing in the first place. 
people are still waiting for the vanguard to lead the way. It's time for a change, and guardians like you are making it happen. No pressure. Hmm.